What up, yo? It's your boy Diplomat. And as you've seen in my clip on Instagram and YouTube Shorts, I finally pulled out the 2003 Denver's Chopper. Now, the Chopper didn't look like this when I first bought it. It looks something more like Now you're probably asking yourself, what happened to the chopper? Well, my original plans were when I bought the chopper were to get it running, get it fixed, and get it on the road. But life had other plans. I left it sit, I didn't touch it at all. It just sat in my backyard, rotting away. After I took the motor out and transmission and gave it or sold it or worked out a deal with Shade Tree Surgeon, which is now the motor that's in the bark party. Now, when I bought this bike, I did take kind of a gamble. I think I paid like $4,300 for the chopper. These choppers normally go from anywhere from probably $25,000 to $60,000. Um, it is an official Denver chopper, which is why they're very, very high value choppers. Is, is is a well-documented story. Denver choppers was started in San Bernardino, California in 1967 and it used to be a custom auto shop where we did uh, custom painting on cars and uh, roof cutting chopping and so on and so forth and uh, Denver Mullins was a guy about four or five years older than me I was in high school and he ended up being my mentor and uh, he was a terrific painter and custom car builder but he bought a Harley Davidson and, and uh, wanted to fix it up and Back then there was no catalogs, no place you could turn to to buy parts. So if you wanted to build something custom, you had to make your own parts. So he got his and, and extended the front end and painted it. And it looked beautiful, beautiful bike. And, and uh, a couple of the other guys got, got bikes and I ended up getting a bike and we all started fixing the bikes and doing making custom parts just for ourselves, just to ride around on weekends and, and Thursday night out, out bar hopping and stuff, you know? So it was just kind of our, our deal our group from Denver Choppers and then people started noticing our, our custom bikes and uh, they said hey man can you build me a front end or how about a paint job or or can, can you build me a set of pipes and before you know it uh, we got so busy at the shop that we closed the automotive portion of the shop down and uh, started Denver Choppers hung a shingle and uh, named after Denver and, and away we went and never looked back. I didn't know what I was up for. The secondary damage on the actual Copart listing said mechanical, and I wasn't sure if it was the motor or something else. From looking at the history on the vehicle, it was just in an accident, and I'm assuming that it really wasn't the motor, I hope. I could only assume that the only reason they put secondary damage as mechanical was because when it arrived at Copart it wasn't able to be started. Now when I saw the listing I and, and I saw the secondary damage I thought to myself that's a total performance motor. Those motors are very indestructible. So I took the gamble and literally within 30 minutes of it arriving here, I had it running. All right. Cards were clean, moment of truth. All I did was clean the carburetor, make sure it had oil, make sure it had spark, and it cranked right up. So by it cranking back up, I just 
ended up taking off the fenders and the tank and everything that was pretty much damaged on the bike and tried to restore it now i want to keep both the wheels but the chrome we're definitely going to have to figure out it obviously had a denver's chopper front end and had to let that go as well but i knew that i wanted to do something a little different with the chopper so i'm thinking pro street now but i'm really not sure anyways let's get on with the uh disassembly Been breaking my head for a little bit, but I'm gonna get it figured out. Now, after spending quite a good of amount of time taking the chopper apart, it's finally done. Well, it's done besides the swing arm. Now, I tried to look and I can't find anything on this swing arm. So if you guys have any idea as to what this swing arm could be, please let me know. I have no clue how to take it apart. I do know what I see from here is there's this little hole that runs all the way through. Now, I didn't want to get anything in there and start hammering away. So I'm just gonna kind of investigate as to how this comes apart. I'm not sure, I'm not sure at all. So if you guys have any ideas how to get this off, please let me know. Normally on a soft tail, you have something kind of like my Vikla, which mine has a cover on it, but behind that cover is a bolt. You loosen it on both sides and you pull the swing arm out. Now on this bike, it doesn't have that. It's she, it's completely clean on either side. There's nothing here. So it's kind of a mystery as to how to get that off. Pretty sure some of you guys get that off real easy, but for me, I don't want to go ahead and damage anything. So I'll just look further into it. Let me know in the comment section down below what you think I should do. And some of you guys are probably wondering what frame is this? This is a diamond chassis. Yes, a beautiful, rare, no longer to be made diamond chassis. So I kind of have to build this bike back together only because of the nostalgia. You have Ego Trip matching wheels. You have performance machine foot controls. You got progressive suspension, which will be replaced. And you have your Dynan Twin Fire. Your Dyna Twin Fire, which will be replaced as well. But all these little custom pieces here that just show a story behind this bike. You know, you have your PM brakes on the rear with the rotor and sprocket on the same side, which all this is gonna be Refurbished, clean, repaired, replaced. Not sure yet, but we'll have to wait and see. But the story behind it is kind of interesting. Now let's take it back two years. 
my first time actually going to Daytona. And actually, it was the first year I met and started hanging out with Shelly. the charmer at all hey guys so we made it here to daytona it is absolutely gorgeous out here so i'm over here doing exhaust installs and tuning bikes and doing intakes this guy this is dennis i met him two years ago right after i purchased the chopper and he was the person that did the appraisal on the chopper right before it went off to go park and uh i did the wreck evaluation that thing was on my lift at one point that's crazy and that was in dallas texas and he was right just by a few photos, he was able to tell that that was the same bike he appraised that was now sitting in Copart in Dallas, Texas. The crazy part is the bike was purchased on August 28th, 2015 in Daytona. So whatever happened to the bike from 2015 all the way up until it got into my hands? I can't find any history on this motorcycle. The title does say Denver's Chopper, but I can't find any history behind it. I don't know who the owner was. Was it in a magazine? What was the reason behind this bike? I, not sure. Was evaluated by him when it was wrecked in Texas. Yeah. And now it's in my hands. Yeah, small world. And this what is the first creep. time we ever met. So. I know, this is insane, bro. Yo, so, it was good meeting yeah, you, my guy. Matching Ego Trip wheels, which I looked into it and the company still makes wheels but they no longer make this one and i tried to get this repaired there was a company down in i think believe cape coral something like that and it was twelve hundred dollars to get this repaired so if you know anybody who can repair for a lot less let me know please and also i'm not sure if i'm going to keep them chrome so if you know a powder coater let me know in the comment section as well and also a painter that can paint to match my tank and fenders now the guy who painted the vehicle for me um he did a great job but he's busy with a whole bunch of other things so we're gonna find somebody else who can actually paint this up for me and get it to match my tank they are probably wondering what motor i'm gonna put in this bike and i have something but actually let me just show you what we have here is a sns sidewinder 113 this was actually going to be the motor that was going to be put in Barf Party. However, we made some agreements. He has that motor that was in this, and I grabbed that one only because at the time I really couldn't get the bike done. So now that we're able to get back to it, this is the motor that's going to be in it. I did call SNS because it, it is an older style motor, it's an Evo. Part number right there. And um, there are parts that I do need for this motor. So if you guys have any parts laying around or you are interested in selling me some, please let me know. But this is the motor that I'm gonna put into it. A lot of you guys are probably thinking, yeah, you should have put a big motor in it, but there really isn't no need to put a big motor in a chopper like this because I kind of want to ride slow so I can show the bike off. And no matter how big of a motor you put in these choppers or in a Harley, you're still gonna get gapped by a probably 600 or 1000 sport bike. And yes, I'm probably gonna trigger a lot of you Harley guys in the comment section, but it's okay. It's hard to uh, accept the fact that no matter how much horsepower you put into these motors, these motors, that motor, you are still going to get gapped. I hate you. by a sport bike and depending on how the sport bike is actually modified you may only be able to stay with him for two seconds and then he's gone but it's okay so yeah we're not going to go with a high horsepower motor on this bike we're going to keep it with the stock 113 make it more show make it a little bit of go and then just kind of take it to some events and things like that no need to go high horsepower on this bike here now the motor that was in it 
was a high horsepowered uh, motor and well that's in another bike about wrapping it up for this video i'm not sure where i want to go right now probably going to figure out how to get the swing arm off and then kind of start putting the motor back together once we find parts i'm not going to send it out to get painted yet i want to start adding the motor adding some parts here and there maybe cutting some things off i don't know yet because these tabs look like they're a little somebody was a, a rookie welder but we'll see that about wraps it up for this video. Y'all be safe. God bless. I'll talk to you guys on the next video. Oh, and for those of you that haven't seen the Cholo in a while, let's give you some ear candy.